In this week's video I'm going to show you how to paint this pretty snake's head fritillary and I'll also share something with you that I learned about mixed media paper that I'm not too happy about. Let's get started. Okay, so first of all let's talk about materials. Today I'm using De La Rowney mixed media. Just use whatever paper that you have and that you're comfortable with. And I've traced down the outline like this by printing off the photograph and just using a 0.5 mechanical pencil, but you can of course draw it freehand if you want to. I'm using a number eight round from Zen Art Supplies as well as a selection of their different brushes from their fine line selection. The colors that I'm using today are Buff Titanium from Daniel Smith, Moon Glow from Daniel Smith, Permanent Violet from Windsor & Newton, and we have Rose of Ultramarine from Daniel Smith, Cadmium Yellow Pale, Windsor Orange and French Ultramarine from Windsor & Newton, and I will link all the materials I'm using in the description box underneath this video, but as always, please use what you have. Because you've asked, we are keeping the reference photograph in screen throughout the tutorial. Watercolour is all about building up your colours slowly and carefully, so you can see me here with a mix of buff titanium that I'm adding all over the bud of the fritillary like this. And you can see I've done a separate colour chart video here, which I will link on the top right hand side of your screen, which shows you how to match your colours in a super easy way. So I'm going to use buff titanium on the little areas that you can see here using my number eight round. So I decided this brush was a little bit too big, but I used it at the beginning for speed. Once the buff titanium is dry, I'm using a watery mix of Rose of Ultramarine by Daniel Smith. This time, I'm applying a really watery mix to form the base color of the pink tone that you can see on the fritillary. Now, as I said, watercolour is all about building up your layers slowly and carefully. Watercolour often goes through what we call the ugly duckling phase. So it's important that you see the process from start to finish. So I highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through. Now you'll notice me here just doing another layer of that lovely Rose of Ultramarine. If you don't have this colour, use the nearest that you have, but I've chosen this one because it has a beautiful blue undertone. You might have seen at the beginning of this video that we have a free reference photo and line drawing to accompany this tutorial. In fact, all of our tutorials here on YouTube. You can access this in a few ways. We have all of the line drawings and photographs in our Facebook group, which I will link in the description box underneath this video, as well as at the end of this video, I will do a still of the line drawings so that you can do a screenshot and save it to your photos. And also you can have it on our community tab right here on YouTube. So head over to that, do a screenshot and you can print the line drawing, the free traceable line drawing that way as well. While we're waiting for the flower to dry, our first wash of the flower to dry, we can mix our greens. And you can see me here doing a mixture of cadmium yellow pale and French ultramarine in different ratios. So I have a very yellowy looking green where I've added more of the cadmium yellow pale and more of a bluey tone where I've added less of the yellow color. Once again, I'm using a really small brush to add a very, very light wash to begin with. And remember, we are going to be building these colors up slowly and carefully to get the depth of color that we need, but we always start off with weak and watery washes. I'm tipping in between the colour greens on my palette here. I'm not being too fussy and I'm not sticking exactly to the colours on the photograph, but I'm just using the photograph as a guide. But the important thing to remember here is to have different shades of green as you work through. You don't want the colours to look solid and false, so just keep it looking really natural um, by just mixing the colour greens as you can see. 
You'll notice that I have a tiny puddle of water on my, the center of my palette here, and I use this to clean my brush in between, in between applying the paint to the paper. The reason I'm not cleaning my brush in the water is because your brush can become flooded with water and therefore spoil the application of the paint. You can see that once I've applied the paint, I'm patting my brush on the kitchen paper to pat it dry. I do have a particular way of applying my paint and I have done a separate video on this. If this is something that interests you, then I will put it on the top of your screen right now. So click through to that and you can watch it later on after you've watched this video. Continuing the process for all of the other leaves, dipping in between the color greens that I have mixed on my palette. You'll notice that I'm patting my brush on the kitchen paper to remove the excess paint before I apply it onto the paper, as you can see. It just means that you're not flooding your paper with paint and it's much, much easier to control your paint this way. This time I'm using the more blue tone, just carrying on the process with all of the other leaves like this. So I've continued the process on all of the other petals and whilst we're waiting for them to dry, I'm just mixing a, um, a puddle here of cadmium yellow pale and I'm applying it to the center of the plant. Remember that these are just our base tones and we will continue to build them up as, the color, as we work through the tutorial. So pretty much all of the base tones are now in place. I've just added a tiny bit here of Windsor Orange and we're applying and just applying this to the center here to give it a bit more depth. Just working through section by section. You can see the colors that I'm pointing to here and I'm using my really stubby old mixer brush here. Don't use your good brushes for mixing your paint. So we have buff titanium with moon glow and buff titanium with rose of ultramarine here. If you don't have moon glow by Daniel Smith, you could use something like a neutral tint. That would work just as well, but I happen to have it within my kit, so I'm using it today. Notice that beautiful, subtle kind of um, creamy colors that we have here. This forms the sort of soft colors that you can see on the bud. They are very, very gentle hues and gentle colors. And these two colors mixed together work beautifully. So we have the Rose of Ultramarine with Buff Titanium and Buff Titanium with Moon Glow. So you can see by building these colors up slowly, we are creating not only the color, but also depth and form. Notice how I'm using my finer brush to add a little bit of a shape to these colors here. This time I mix in Perilean Violet by, da by Windsor and & Newton and yep, you got it. <laughs> this is what happens when you're not concentrating, you drop your paint onto the paper and I'm sure many of you have done this in the past. I was a little bit blase about it and decided to lift it out with my magic eraser. But as you can see, for some reason on this paper, it didn't budge. And I tried quite a few times off camera to remove it but unfortunately it didn't happen. 
So I decided to press on with the tutorial with this rather ugly looking smudge inside. But we'll talk about that later on and I'll explain to you right at the end of this video before I put the line drawing up how I managed to salvage the photograph really easily. But for now let's press on with the tutorial. So working wet and wet I applied a tiny bit of water to the bottom petal here and I'm dropping in the watery mix of the perilee and violet like this. The reason I worked wet and wet was quite simply because I wanted that bottom petal to have a nice natural blur where it hit that buff titanium colour on the base. Just adding some water, it's a little bit discoloured from the other wash but that's plain water and you can see me dropping in that beautiful perilee and violet. Now remember all of these colours will need to be built on as we work through the tutorial but this is our base tone and our base colour on which we will build the colours later on. This is a size 2.0 fine line brush but use whichever brush you have that has a really fine point. Notice how I'm using a kind of squiggly motion to create the little gaps in the colours on the fritillary. And just using this finer brush here, this is a 5.0, to mix perilee and violet with a tiny bit of that mixture that we had earlier on, which is cadmium yellow pale and Windsor orange. I just felt it needed a little bit of a, a boost there. And you can see me lifting out some of the colours to, to start the pattern that's going to be on the under the, pe the petals that are underneath. With this watery mix on my brush you can see how I'm just adding a sort of gentle wiggle in motion to create the shapes of where the kind of checkered look on the fritillary is. Now I'm not strictly sticking to the photograph we just want to give the illusion of this pattern being there. I've tried to simplify this tutorial as much as possible so that it is suitable for all levels. Because we use a learn to paint as you paint approach to teaching, I wanted to make it accessible for everybody so that you can all join in. Going back to the buff titanium and moon glow and I'm applying this to the upper petal here. I thought that it had this kind of muted purpley grey tone and I think this colour works really really well for this element. You can see how I'm just using a damp brush to blend those colours in. And just continuing the process on the other petals. And you can see the colours that I'm picking up from my palette so I won't repeat myself as we work through the tutorial but it's quite, it's quite apparent the colours that I'm using. So now that this wash has dried I'm going over it again to enhance the colour as you can see but this time not going over everything I'm leaving little gaps And just carry on working through. You don't want this to be a solid colour. This is the beauty of watercolour, how you can just layer up your, how you can just build up your layers. But please make sure that they are very dry before you apply your next layer. Now I've chosen to use a mixed media paper today because if you are new to painting it's a really good way of blending your colours. I'm a huge fan of cold pressed paper. Um, which has its own kind of merits but for me mixed media paper is a really great um, one for beginners and if you're um, it really helps the blending process. You saw me there just adding a plain water glaze to unify everything and it's really important that you make sure that everything's completely dry before you do this next step. By adding that plain water glaze it just kind of blends the colours together on your painting. So everything's now dry and I'm using a thicker mix here of perilee and violet to just add a little bit of detail around the centre of the plant. Notice how strong the colour is at this point. 
So we have Perilee and Violet in one puddle, and the other puddle has Perilee and Violet with Rose of Ultramarine. If you don't have Rose of Ultramarine, you could use something like a Quinacridone Magenta or something like that. If you don't have the colours that I'm using and you're struggling to match the colours that you have to the colours that I've chosen, then please let me know in the comments below the colours that you have and I will do my best to try and help you match up those colours. You can see how I'm using the tip of my number 5.0 brush to create a little bit more shape here now. We are given the illusion of that checkered look just by gently creating these little circles and also creating some veins. As I said earlier on, we launch brand new full length tutorials on our channel right here on YouTube every single Tuesday. And if you are finding value in this video, then please consider giving it a thumbs up. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you like me. And you may also want to consider hitting that subscribe button and that little bell notification so that you don't miss new content. We're also on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour, where we try to post up daily and we have lots of behind the scenes things there. I just want to take a moment to tell you about our Patreon, which at the time of filming has four different membership levels, from mini weekly videos of doodles, vlogs and podcasts, to full-length botanical painting tutorials, which are exclusive to Patreon and are of course ad-free. If this is something that interests you, I've put a link in the description below, plus it's a way for you to support my channel. Okay, so back to the snake's head fritillary. I'm just adding a watery mix here of the, uh, the Perilene Violet. It's just to take that whiteness away from the outside edge of this upper petal. So a very watery mix there going on and just picking up that darker color to enhance the color that we've already applied. So at this stage of the painting, now that we have all our base colours in place, it really is a matter of building up the pattern that we already have. So all the guesswork is now taken out of it and it's just looking up your photograph and building up the colours like this. So you can see once again I'm dipping into all those different colour wells on my palette here and working through. This little palette that you see me using is from Etcher, which I bought from Jackson's, and it's really great because it has lots of different wells and it comes in a pack of two. The other one has many, many more, and I will link that in the description box as well in case it's something that interests you. Remember to blend through with a soft, damp brush. Thank you. 
and just picking up some of that orangey tone with a mixture of and adding a tiny bit of the perillion violet to enhance some of the areas in the centre of the plant. And while I have the paint on the brush, I'm just using the opportunity to outline a few of the petals. Going back to my error, <laughs> my paint splash, this is the first time I have really not been able to remove it and I think it's got something to do with the mixed media paper. Maybe it's because it's, it's a little more delicate but it somehow seemed to really absorb that perylene violet. This is something I have never encountered before. If you've had this problem and, and you have managed to solve, to solve it without um, damaging the paper as I have Drop it in the comments below and let me know how you managed to um, redeem your painting. Anyway, moving on, we'll um, carry on regardless with this colour here. You can see I've mixed the same colour greens as before, varying mixes of, varying the ratio of the yellow to blue. So we have cadmium yellow pale and French ultramarine in different ratios as you can see. Just use your discretion, there is no formula, I've just mixed a little bit of more blue in each puddle. And you can see me here now beginning to enhance the colours that we have already in place. I'm, this time I'm not taking the colour all over and I'm just dropping in a tiny bit of the darker value here where that stem hits the petal. This is the darker blue tone, the blue-green tone, and where that error is, where I've removed the, um, the painting error there, I'm just gently taking the tip of the brush to create this illusion of texture. You can see that I'm not taking the colour all the way down, but instead just giving the illusion of there being a little bit of texture on that stem. Maybe it's taking your eye a little bit away from that error. And just sharpening up the edges like this. Dropping in that darker value and outlining the outside edge of the stem. And this is the blue tone on the edge of this particular leaf here. So for this I'm using my number 5.0 fine liner brush but um, just use whichever brushes that you have within your kit that have a really fine point. I've got a mixture here of perylene violet that I'm dropping in where I think it's needed, particularly on this stem here. Although we have that green mix to begin with, you can see that by adding a tiny bit of perylene violet and blending it through like this, it just unifies it and gives that a sort of softer brown tone. And again on the outside edge here, this looks like it could be the beginning of another bud, I'm not sure, but it just had a kind of brownie tone. And the important thing is to keep them looking different. We don't want them to be a solid green colour. This is why I've mixed so many different colours on my palette here. As I said, don't worry about matching them entirely. You just want to have different ratios of yellow to blue. So our first layers are now dry, we can start to build up those second washes. Working carefully around any adjoining leaves. I'm adding a tiny bit of that purple tone to the tip. and I'm using the tip of the brush to bring down that colour onto the dry wash that's already there, 
blending it through with some water and patting it dry on my kitchen paper. Notice how I'm blending the outside edges into the paper like this and adding a tiny bit of perylene violet to the tip and blending it through once more. Now it's up to you what you do with the bottom parts of these leaves. You could actually take your paint right the way to the end of the paper and give them a really sh sharp cropped look or you can do as I've done and just blend them into the paper. The paint is almost dry at this point so I'm just using my fine liner brush to add a little bit of detail and veining as I work through like this. It gives the illusion of that leaf having a little bit of texture rather than it looking flat and already that's made a huge difference. And I've continued the process on most of the other leaves using exactly the same method. So once again I've cleaned out my palette and you can see I've got my puddles of yellow already mixed and I decided to add a tiny bit of sap green. Now you don't have to add sap but most people have sap within their palette so I've added it at this stage to create a little bit more vibrancy. But of course it's optional. Add in the bluey green mix here and outline in this leaf with my fine liner brush. We all see things very differently as well. So if you feel that a particular leaf has a more bluey tone, then go ahead and put that blue tone in. As I said, I'm not sticking strictly to the photograph, it's just to give um, a guide to make this super easy for everyone to paint. And enjoy! Painting is all about enjoying the process and just losing yourself in a moment in time to do something that you like to do. So once again, using my fine nano brush and just enhancing any of the areas that I feel needed a little bit of a boost but making sure that everything's dry. And it really is a case of just continuing the process to work through. Any areas that you feel need sharpening up, sharpening up, now is the time to do it. I'm adding a tiny bit of a green tone to the centre of the plant here and once again just looking at my photo and if I feel that any of the leaves need darker values this is the time to do it. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of perylene violet to the green here once again to enhance that browny tone that we have on the tips of some of the leaves. Cleaning my brush and blending it through. And we'll just continue until the painting is finished, enhancing the areas that we feel need boosting. Remember to stay right until the end of this video where I'm going to show you the line drawing for you to screenshot. I'll also put a playlist of different botanical tutorials that you may want to watch so you can click through and I'll see you there. But I'm also going to share with you how I really, really quickly and easily saved my photograph using Snapseed. So if you stay a few moments longer, I'll show you how I did that.
So just continue in the process like this until we're finished. Snapseed, by the way, is a free photo editing app that you can get both on Android and iOS. So just in case um, you haven't got that already. I know a lot of people use Snapseed to do their photo editing, as I do. Um, it's one of the apps that I use all the time. I use Pixelmator, Snapseed, and also Visco. But uh, Snapseed is a free app that anyone can download and it doesn't cost a penny. Just add in some detail here on the outside edge by using that kind of squiggly motion again. Until we're done. Okay, so here's the finished painting. Let's sort this error out. Launch your Snapseed app, and all you need to do is go to the healing tool and quite simply hold your finger over it. And that will take it away. It's that simple, and no one will know any different. All you do, save to your camera roll, and you're done. Here is the line drawing coming up, so please save it to your camera roll, and thank you for watching.